Hi, I'm Janet Ingle, and this is my Read Repair Shop. It's the next best thing to an in-person read lesson, all done with the mail and the internet. I love the 21st century. Today, I have three reads that were sent to me by Anthony, and I'm going to analyze them and make some improvements, I hope, and send them straight back to him. I very much hope that this video is helpful both to Anthony and perhaps to you. I'm going to start with this uh, rainbow-colored read. It looks really nice. It feels a little bit up when I beep it. But it's got a nice C crow. And when I put a plaque in, I can see that it's really well constructed, right? I've got a heart, I've got a, a tip, and I've got a back that are all like very clear and pretty well delineated. Um, the thing that I was seeing, and now I'm trying to get us positioned here. The thing that I was seeing as I looked at this right before I went on video, there we go, is that the tip really seems uniformly thin all the way across. It's not exactly thinner at the sides and at the corners than in the tip. And as I look at the rooftop itself, it seems to go pretty straight across. I'm just sort of coloring right where the flattest part uh, where the, the thickest part of the heart is. Um, so you can see, I hope, that there's a little bit of a lack of symmetry here between the tip on this side and the tip on this side. And I think that we're going to get just a little bit more refinement in that crow and then in the way it plays by making sure that the rooftop is well separated from the heart, making sure that the sides are thinner than the center. Um, I'm having a hard time showing this perfectly on the video, but it almost looks just uniformly thin from left to right all the way across the tip of this reed. Uh, and that's where a little bit of the, of the brightness um, that we hear is coming from. So I'm scraping basically the leftmost and rightmost three grains on either side of the tip. And also just re-sculpting the rooftop just a little bit for symmetry. I'm not touching the center of the reed because it's already super thin in there. Um, I think in one of my videos, Understanding the Tip and Transition, I've got some diagrams that I did about needing to have some invisible but good cane in the center of the tip, right above the rooftop. So doing that, I dropped the crow a little bit. So I'm going to clip just a hair. I always want to be a little delicate, especially with somebody else's read. And one more. a little tiny bit of an edge in the sound here and I think I'm gonna keep working at the corners of the tip I really want to make sure that they're the thinnest parts and that the tip is well separated from the heart and I'm not entirely sure that that was fully the case and one more clip This read when it arrived was uh, really very much fine. That little upness is still bothering me a little bit. This is read is sitting. Um, it's not exactly sitting high. It's sitting up in a way I don't love. So I would like more resonance and more depth in the sound. I can see where Anthony's done a terrific job behind the heart. And I'm just going to work a little bit in that exact area for symmetry. I don't know if you can see that here, 
that's where the bottom of the heart is, but it's there on the right. And we've got some some notches in that area. Is this visible on my screen? I'm looking to see. I think it is. So I'm going to do just the littlest bit more bottom of the heart, which is where I think the depth and the resonance is going to come from. And I'm also noticing now that my knife is on it that we've got a slight lack of symmetry back to front with the thickness of the heart. This side, uh, our lower blade, is quite thin in the heart and quite flat across. And on the upper blade, we've definitely got some more arch. Let's see, how do we want to visualize that? Some more arch over the crown of that reed. Okay, now that I've worked behind the, uh, behind the heart, I've dropped the crow. I'll clip one more time. I love to clip. touched the heart. I've not touched the heart. My knife has not touched it even once. But I'm bothered now that I'm playing it by how thin it feels under at my lower lip. Um, I think that's a little bit of where this whininess that we're a little bit hearing in the sound comes from. Um, and the only way I know to make a heart feel thicker is to make everything else around it thinner. So I'm gonna go here on the right hand side here on the left hand side, making sure that that gutter of the rooftop, um, the area right above the heart on the far, far left and far, far right is cut in as strongly as I can. I'm gonna work just a little bit more behind with the goal of bulking up the heart by scraping away every single other thing. Lip again. I got a beautiful crow. Um, the low parts of the crow are coming in because the heart's so nice and thin. There we go. For me, um, that is a better and more well-rounded read than it was when it came in. And mostly what I did um, was dealing with the arc, the thickness across uh, the the crown of this reed. Um, the way this cane, let's see, stand it up like so. So if you can picture this uh, opening, uh, this reed was feeling pretty flat and there was not extra thickness like we needed up in the tip of the tip. So that is mostly what I did, is I worked thinness to the sides of the tip, and I open up the back a little for resonance and to make the heart feel thicker. And I think that, uh, I hope that Anthony will find that an improvement. So there's our read number one. Read number two. I'm going out of order for him because I feel like read, uh, the, our white read has a very different issue. This one, as I look at it, I'm seeing a few of the same things here that I did in read number one. Um, the transition from the heart into the tip is a little asymmetric on the two sides, here to here. And as I hold it to the light, I know you can't see this on the video and I'm sorry. Um, as I hold it to the light, I can't see a lot of good stuff in the center of the tip. Um, he's left a really beautiful spine here, which is what's keeping that uh, opening and that crown so nice and round. And I'm going to try to not mess with that spine one bit. So that's what I'm seeing so far. When I beep the reed and play the reed, I feel a lot more heft to it than I did with the first one. up 
and down the oboe. What I'm feeling in this read is that the opening is a little bigger than I prefer in my own playing, but that's fine. That's uh, clearly just a difference between Anthony and me, I'm imagining. Um, but that the read is almost a little scary, that it, wor it works so easily, it's almost scary. This, as soon as I tongue, it makes a loud sound. Um, and I would have to shut it down with my mouth pretty hard to play softly. Um, so for me, there's, there's very little cushion. The response is so easy that the, uh, that the whole reed is vibrating almost as soon as I tongue on it. It scares me. For me, this is also about the transition from the tip into the heart. I love how thick the heart is here and how healthy the heart is. But I am inclined to do the exact same thing here. I'm inclined to go to the very gutter of the rooftop and gently polish the side into the corner on both sides. I'm not touching the center of the tip even a little bit. I'm not even going close. And as I work this other blade, I'm looking for symmetry with the first side. And I really want to just say that probably the result, the, the thing that I was feeling, this sort of immediate vibration of the entire reed, um, has to do with there not being sufficient stop, sufficient difference between the tip and the heart. So I'm hoping that what I just did is going to separate the tip from the heart just a little bit so that we uh, have a little more resistance to work with. Well, obviously that made it a lot easier, so I'm going to clip. And there, immediately, I feel just a little bit of a slowing down of those vibrations. Whereas a minute ago, I would crow and immediately get the low very the uh, low partials. Now I crow and I get a high one and then a low one, which is sort of what I wanted. I wanted that little bit of stop, that little bit of resistance. What I love about this read is how easy it is actually to play. And it has a really nice sound and it basically plays in tune. If this were my read, I would want a little more depth in that sound even now, and I would want to go behind the heart. I really do love this space right here and here for giving me um, more depth and more I don't know, I guess but a little bit more good resistance. It's very tempting to do that. Let me just do a little. When I go in the windows, I really do push right there behind the heart just a little. that drop my crow just a nickel's worth. I'm going to clip again. I don't know if you can hear that. Um, for me, that gave us immediately just a little bit more depth and a little bit more um, sweetness in the sound. So I'm hoping that, that uh, Anthony enjoys that as much as I do. I think this read is really, really nice. It started out nice. There were only a few uh, finessing things that I did, the sides and corners of the tip and a little bit right behind the heart. Um, when we work with uh, reads, I talk all the time about making sure that the long scrape from the windows all the way through the heart and out through the tip, that all of those parts of the read communicate I almost feel like in this particular read, um, Anthony's three parts are communicating just a little bit too well. And when I put just a little bit of stop in there, um, this read gave me a little more cushion to blow against and to feel a little bit safer. Um, but it was basically pretty good. It was well balanced. It was crowing a C when it came to me. Um, I think Anthony's doing a terrific job with reads here. And that said, 
our third read here, this white read, for me, um, it slipped backwards or overlapped backwards is the first thing that I notice. So I can see uh, right here from the uh, overlap of the thread itself that Anthony's winding right-handed, but his reed is overlapped this way. Um, which is making the opening be just a little bit peculiar. And when I play it, I can really feel that uh, low, that other blade vibrating hard against my lip. That's the first thing that I notice. This one is crowing a little bit low and shares with the others this sense of immediacy. Um, it's also got a, a slightly bigger and less comfortable opening for me than, than the others did. So that's the first thing I notice. I also observe that the tip on this reed is much heavier than the others were and much shorter. So I'm not sure, let's see. He asks, um, will this break in and play better or does it need work? Um, I think it definitely does. He's looking for better response and intonation. Um, for me, when I beep it, it feels open and when I blow um, this technique, uh, I'm sort of aspirating the attack rather than tonguing the attack. Just starting to blow and seeing where the pitch actually comes in. And I have to blow pretty hard before that comes in, um, contrasting with his other reeds, which enter really beautifully at a piano dynamic. Um, this one feels very open to me. The overlap troubles me, and I don't see a lot, if any, of uh, separation between the tip and the heart. It's really uh, almost a direct path, and the tip is very, very thin. And very, very thick, excuse me. So I can see where, in order to get response from this read at all, um, Anthony's gone into the heart and scraped. So I'm concerned that once I start scraping on this, we're going to find that uh, the whole thing sort of... Uh, dwindles down because the heart's already thin. Once we thin the tip to get response, we may uh, lose some of the quality that this reed already has. Once we start to scrape, we may lose some of the quality this reed has. But when I play it, I almost get a crow already in the beep because the uh, there's no stop, right? The, the beep is the crow because as soon as I start to tongue, the whole reed is vibrating even though it's hard to get that response to happen. Um, and the reed sort of only goes loud because that's how hard I have to tongue to get it to start. It's got a nice sound. It's got a really nice sound. Um, I'm a little worried, again, that once I start scraping in the tip, we're going to lose what quality we have because uh, the heart's already pretty thin. But I also think that scraping in the tip and separating the tip a little bit more from the heart is the only thing that's going to get a uh, response going in this read and is going to tame it a little bit. So I'm going to try. This is Reed Repair Shop, after all. All right, I'm going to do a little cut in right here at the gutter of the rooftop and thin that out to the top. Other side, same thing. Definitely over here. I don't know if you can see this in the video. I hope you can. As I press my plaque back against the reed, you can almost not see the thinness of the tip. It's uh, You should. Let's see. You should be able to see the darkness of the plaque through the thin tip a little bit more. And here on Anthony's reed, especially on this blade that I haven't scraped yet, it's almost the same. I can see, I can barely even feel with my finger where that uh, transition is into the rooftop. So that's a big deal. I'm gonna recut that a little bit. Just a little bit of a re-scoop and then thin. Because in general, um, with all three of these reeds, uh, I don't see that the left side and the right side of the tip are thinner than the center of the tip. So I'm really working on focusing in that area.
So as I do that little aspirated attack again, it's definitely coming a lot faster. It's a little bit easier. Um, when I crow, I suspect this will be low now. So low, it's a B flat even, so we'll clip. I'm helping it with my mouth a little bit, but I've gotten it almost up to a C crow. Let's see how that differs from what I had before. I'm gonna do more of the same thing for Anthony here. Um, sides of the tip are so important. And you'll notice that as I work, I hope you can notice in this angle, when I work on the right, I'm really rotating my hands away from each other so that I can focus on that very, very edge. When I work on the left, I'm really rotating my hands towards each other so I can just get that very leftmost and rightmost few grains. I think it's so important because you really want that amount of good stuff in the center of the reed. And somehow, in your scraping, Anthony, you're scraping right into the middle of it, or you're allowing your knife a little bit too much um, leeway in the center of the reed. And I'm taking the tiniest amounts of cane. You can probably see here that I can't even find it. It's almost just dust. Because you're already thin, the reed is pretty refined. Uh, you, the scraping is pretty refined, I should say. Whatever you're doing, you're doing it really nicely and you're not losing corners. <laughs> but I think the thing that's going to give you more stability, more darkness in the sound, and... Uh, more control over your response is getting the sides of the tip to be much thinner than the center of the tip. And that's been consistent across all three of these reads. Certainly, this guy responds right away in the low register. He's a little bit unstable up high, which I suspect uh, has to do still with the both the, the thinness in the center of the tip, definitely the thinness in the heart itself, um, and in this case, the overlap also being a little bit questionable. Um, so because there's only so much I can do uh, with a reed that already has the heart super thin, I'm almost a little bit inclined to stop here. Um, but here's my advice to you, Anthony. When you start your reads, um, and you've got a long scrape of some sort and you start putting your tip in, don't go to the heart too soon. Make sure that you've got the thing vibrating in the tip first, and that, obviously, <laughs> to reiterate, the um, corners of the tip are the very thinnest parts, that you've got a consistent thinning going this way and this way. Um, I've got a little bit more of that built in on all three of these reeds now, um, but I would be much more careful to leave bulk in the heart. I'm gonna do the same thing here that I did with the others, put a little bit more stop right behind the heart. This is a trick to make the heart think it's thicker, because if everything else is thinner, then the reed balances. But we're crowing a B, I'll clip again. Mm. For the first time now, 
when I just beep the reed, I'm not getting that low crow overtone, and that makes me really happy. The beep should just be a beep. We don't want all that uh, junk in the sound when we are uh, in playing position, but the crow still comes when I go to crowing position. So, this is my last playing of this little guy. Actually, I kind of love that now. Over Weird overlap and all, um, that's a read that's, that's got some stuff to it. Um, so, I hope, Anthony, that this has been helpful. I hope, everybody else, that this has been helpful. Um, the lesson here, the universal lesson across this is make sure the sides of your tip are the thinnest part and that the corners of your tip are the thinnest part. That's the biggest thing that I did. Um, make sure that your heart is uh, bulky enough to uh, stop the vibration so that you can tame the thing and so that you can adjust it to your comfort. This has been a reed repair shop. We're all oboists here. We all hit reed slumps from time to time, and there's something so nice about a non-judgmental third party just taking a look to see from the outside something you may have missed. If you would like me to analyze your reads, you can visit JanetIngle.com for more information. I would love to help you out. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.